Hey guys, how's it going? It's Rust Belt Collector here, and we're back with another three and three quarter inch Halo action figure review from Jazzwares slash Wicked Cool Toys. But either way, here we are. We're looking at the Brute Captain with the Mangler, which is the new Brute weapon, I suppose, in the game, in the new game, Halo Infinite. This figure looks really, really awesome. The overall detail and sculpt is really incredible, and the bulk of this figure, like, it's just, it's a hefty, hefty figure. He's a hefty boy, which is exactly what you want to see with a brute character. You don't want to have uh, a skinny one. You want to have one that's very bulky, and uh, that's exactly what we're getting here. I wasn't able to find this one in the original store where I got the last several figures from the Halo line, but I did get lucky and visited another store recently and found him sitting on the shelf all by his lonesome and decided I have to have some Covenant to go with my Spartans. So here we go, this is the Brute Captain, and yeah, he looks really, really cool, just holding him in hand. Obviously, he's got this really bright red armor, which looks very nice. Uh, it's a little bit different, because I think the Brute Captains in Halo 3 had uh, blue armor, if I'm not mistaken. However, this is one of the Banished. It's not a standard Covenant Brute, so his armor patterning could be a little bit different for that reasoning. Um, but the red is really nice, it looks cool, the helmet looks great, I love the, the shape of it, the design, it really calls back to the Halo 3 Brutes, while still being unique and very distinct in its design, but all the armoring looks very Brute-like, it's bulky, it's got spikes and little tidbits coming off of it, looks really cool, it's weathered just a little bit with some silver dry brushing, basically all over from head to toe on the red armor parts, as well as some paint apps on the shoulders, and yeah, this figure looks really cool. So in the packaging, let's talk about the accessories and what this guy comes with. Um, I don't have the box anymore because when I found it on shelves, it was pretty damaged. It may have been a return, I'm not entirely sure, but yeah, it didn't really turn out the best, so I didn't want to leave it in the package for the review. I ripped it out, and I will just go ahead and show you guys what came with the figure. First off, of course, it comes with one of these really nice base plates with two pegs for the character to stand on. This figure stands pretty well, as you can see, on its own, but you know, if you just want to be very sure that it's not going to fall over, use one of these bad boys. They're interlockable with other character stands that come with the three and three quarter inch Halo figures, so that is really nice. Also, as with all these Halo figures, including the 6.5 inch line, comes with a code for Halo Infinite. I'm actually going to give you guys that right here. Uh, whoever gets it first, congratulations. I hope you can read that. Uh, basically what it does is it unlocks a Wicked Cool Toys themed emblem, and if you get a second code, it will unlock a Wicked Cool Toys themed um, armor color skin. Like, I, I don't know how it works in Halo Infinite. It's a little different than like Halo Reach or Halo 3, but it basically unlocks a color um, pattern, a color scheme, a skin for a, like a Wicked Cool Toys themed one. I'm not sure what that looks like, but there you go. So any two cards will unlock those. The first card that you use will ultimately unlock the emblem. The second card will unlock the skin. At least that's how it was for me. And then any following codes that you enter will just say you've already unlocked these items. Pass on the card to somebody else. So that's what I'll be doing with these cards. Uh, any future figures that I get, if they don't have new items to unlock, I'll just give them to you guys because I have no use for them. Then for accessories, he comes with this new Brute Mangler, which is a really interesting weapon. It seems to be like a revolver slash Brute Spiker, so it's like a Spiker and the Mauler from Halo 3 mixed together to make the Mangler. And I'm interested to see how it performs. It seems like a really interesting weapon, probably six to eight shots. The paint jobs here are pretty simple, but nice. It is just a simple silver paint with a little bit of brown there to simulate the grip and that looks cool. Overall, the sculpt is good, so I can't complain there. The figure holds it really well as well, so you can just slip it into his brute hands there, and as you can see, he holds it really nice. It's a one-handed weapon, so you know it's gonna be held like that, or something like that. You don't wanna try and, you're not gonna do something like, like this, where you're gonna have two hands or something. It's not really made for that, but the other thing that this guy came with in the package technically were these fins on the back of his armor. These actually peg out 
And I guess if you wanted to display him like that, you didn't like these for some reason, you could absolutely do that. That's up to you. I'm not sure exactly what purpose these will serve in game. They kind of remind me of like the Halo 3 jump pack brutes jetpacks. So maybe the captains will be able to fly around on their jetpacks and blast you from the skies. It's certainly possible, but who knows? They they look cool. You can remove them if you like, if you if you have that preference, but Overall, it's a really cool piece. I just wanted to include them here since they technically come loose in the package and you have to attach them yourself. Something else that kind of qualifies as an accessory is the removable helmet to reveal the lovable Craig. Craig the Brute, isn't he so sweet? If you haven't seen that meme, you don't understand what I'm referring to, but there you go. There's a meme for you to laugh at. Um, but yeah, removable helmet, which is really cool so you can reveal the new Brute face under there. But now with all of that out of the way, we have to take a look at the articulation. And for that, we'll take off the helmet as well. But yeah, he's got a ball joint at the head, so you can get him up, down, left, right. Good amount of tilt side to side. He can look pretty much just about every which way you'd want him to. You have a hinge and a swivel at both shoulders, so he can get up to there with his armor. All the way back to there. You can kind of flex that around, I guess. I didn't really notice that on the forward, but... Yep, you can definitely flex through this armor and, you know, get them all the way up like that. And then you can basically hinge it all the way up as well, which is really nice. The armor doesn't get in the way. It's made out of a softer plastic, so it can really flex up or down. Then you have a single hinge and a swivel at the elbow, which swivels here at the bicep and then also hinges forward. You can't really get it that much forward. I don't know how much you need, but... The armor and just the bulkiness of the sculpt really does impede that, so, I mean, you can get it up to right there, but that's about it, and you can kind of go back like that. So, I mean, it, there's enough there's enough articulation there. With Brutes, it's always been difficult to get the bulkiness of the figure while also maintaining um, articulation, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with the joint there. It's not great, but it's also... It kind of to be expected with a figure of this scale, this this bulk, you know. Then at the wrist, he has a hinge and a swivel. This one is in and out. Again, the softer armor on the on the forearm there allows you to flex it outward as well as inward. And the same can be said here on this hand as well. You can flex it back or flex it forward. Then at the torso, you have a ball joint and a swivel. So there's a there's a ball joint up here. Then there's a swivel at the waist. So you can swivel him all which ways, get a little bit of torso flex out of him. Not much, but it's there, and it's always appreciated that they made the effort at least. They could have just made him like a solid bean body torso, and that really wouldn't work very well. But there we go, there's that. Down to the hips, we have a ball joint at the hips, as well as a thigh swivel. You can get the legs out to there. You can get them forward to there. You can get them back to there. So plenty of posability here, which is really nice. The knees are double jointed, but you can really only get them jointed around to about 90 degrees back. That's really all you need, so I'm not really complaining about that, but it is nice to have that range of articulation in the legs nonetheless. So yeah, you can get it a little past 90 maybe if you play with the joint a little bit, but that's all there is there. Then down at the ankle you have a hinge and a rocker, so you can hinge it back. I think that's as far as it'll go back. You can hinge it forward to there, and then you can also do some rocking with it, so like this and like that, just to keep the feet flat when you're doing crazy action poses, things like that. And once again, like he stands up really well just on his own because I think, you know, he's got some pretty flat, bulky feet, and that just gives him a really nice center of gravity to stand up on his own with. But there is the articulation. I think for a brute figure, this is actually really articulated. I like it. I like having that posability with a an action figure, especially doing toy photography, things like that. You want to have a decent range of articulation. The sculpt work, paint work, all that, the weapon, the stand, all of that is perfect. I really don't have anything to complain about. This is another stellar release from the Jazzwares Wicked Cool Toys Halo line. And, you know, honestly, it's one that you definitely want to pick up. I think that since this is a generic enemy, it's probably going to be a bit tougher to find him in stores because people will want to army build him, people will want to buy him and repaint him into different versions of the Brute. So, you know, be on the lookout for this one if you're a Halo fan. I, it might be tough to find. I don't really know for sure. This is the only one I've seen in stores. 
so just keep your eyes peeled if you're if you're trying to hunt down this halo line now just for scale reference here he is next to a standard three and three quarter inch mark 7 spartan from the same line and also here he is next to the glory years musical memories of world war ii cassette tape volume 2 just for scale for you old timey lovers and collectors out there I really like how these figures scale next to each other. The Brute really does scale probably two to three heads taller than the Spartan, which is pretty game accurate, and I just like to have that kind of scale, that kind of imposing presence of the Brutes in this line. It looks really, really good. You know, the Spartan's going to have to actually uh, look up to the Brute a little bit when he's getting beaten up by him. It's just really awesome to see them pay attention to the scale like this and really get an accurate difference between the two figures. But there we go guys, that's that's the review of this Brute Captain in the 3 and 3 quarter inch Jazzwares Halo Infinite line. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys are looking for these figures, be sure to check your Walmarts and your Myers. You know, they'll be popping up very soon, I think, if they haven't already. As always, there's a link down in the description to my social media, my Instagram, my Facebook, as well as to my merch site. If you guys want to check out any of those, it's down in the description. There's also an address to my P.O. box. If you guys want to send anything into the channel, I will do an unboxing here on the channel. As always, leave a like, leave a comment, whatever you guys feel inclined to do. I appreciate each and every one of you. And as always, I will catch you all in the next video.